Hello ladies and gentle ladies and welcome back to another Minecraft mining tutorial for Forge 1.20 and in this tutorial we are going to be talking about how you can update your mod to a newer version and specifically we are going to be updating from 1.20 to 1.20.2 so let's go ahead and get started so as you can see I've come into my gradle.properties file which you can find in the root of your project and all we need to do to update really is just change some numbers in here. So you will see immediately the Minecraft version is 1.20, yours may be 1.20.1 .1, but we're going to want to change this to 1.20.2. And then we have the forge version here so this is very important that we change this too so what we're going to want to do is go to files.minecraftforge.net as you can see and we're going to want to change to 1.20.2 and if we go show all versions you'll see that the latest here is 48.0.20 so that's the version we're going to want. You can also see that up here and generally the latest is the version you want. Yours may be more recent than that and if so that's probably the one you want to go with. So we can come out of that. We can come back into IntelliJ and replace this value. Then we have the forge version range and the loader version range and we're going to want to change this to 48. It's important that this number here will match this number right here on the forge version so that's just what we change it to there and that should be pretty much it the mappings version however we're going to want to change that to 1.20.2 and the next tutorial is going to be covering parchment mappings so we'll switch to parchment then but for now that should be fine all we can do once we've done that is we can come to the gradle tab on the right and we can just hit this reload button. Now yours may look slightly different to this, but conceptually the UI should be the same. You'll still have a Gradle tap on the right and you will still have some kind of reload button over here. So you just wanna hit that reload button and you'll see that starts to do the Gradle task. Now, if you want to just see what's happening, you can go to view, tool windows and build, and you should be able to see everything that's going on in here. So it downloads everything and all of that now i'll be back with you once this has completed all right so there we go that has completed we've got a build success you see it only took three minutes for me it may take a little bit longer for you or it may be shorter too um just note it might get stuck on this decompile step for a while i wouldn't worry about it too much that's just what it does it always gets uh, stuck on that part for a long time so now we should be able to basically run the game and it should load as 1.20.2 now it's important to though check that you do not have any compile errors as sometimes updating can bring you errors from things that may have changed in minecraft or in forge uh, specifically in this version uh, there's a lot of networking changes and also something called glm is gone so that's not coming back either at least for the foreseeable future um, so that wouldn't work if you had that in your code and a lot of the networking stuff has changed too. Now luckily we don't have any of that so far so that's not going to cause us any problems but in the next tutorial um, or the tutorial after the next tutorial where we go on to talk about menus um, that is going to be a little bit different than it would be in 1.20.1 1 .1 and below so that's why I'm making this tutorial before we do that one and yeah you'll see a lot of stuff is going to go through here so it's just going to compile java it's going to see if everything's fine um, and if it is then it should run so i'll see you once the game has loaded since this is going to take a while all right so we actually do have one error here and that is with our screen tutorial now it turns out this render background method has gone and it's actually now named render transparent background so that is actually one change that we do have i didn't realize that was um, a change so that's that's kind of an interesting thing to note that you may also have that issue if you have anything relating to screens once again i'll see you once the game is loaded all right so there we go you can see the game has now loaded and we're on 1.20.2 and if you go into the mod you'll see forge was updated there minecraft updated there 
and everything should be fine so we can obviously actually load into a world and everything should work you might just want to check that everything still works i mean nothing should change logically between versions but you never know i suppose now one question i know people are going to have and that is going to relate to something called neoforge now if you don't know what neoforge is it's basically a fork of forge which has most of the original um or most of the kind of current um or pre-current it's kind of hard to explain uh, but most of the forge developers in it so the only people developing forge now is actually uh, lex which is the owner of forge um, so that's kind of a whole situation that i don't really want to go into here but uh, just note that i am going to be sticking with forge um, until basically further notice so until something dramatically changes that requires me to switch i'm going to be sticking with forge now i do have my reasons for that um, and i know a lot of people might not agree and they might want to use neoforge for now that's going to be fine but once neoforge updates to 120.2 and um, they're going to break a lot of stuff and mods are not going to be compatible anymore so that's kind of going to be a whole future situation um, so we'll see what happens with that but just note I'm going to be sticking with Forge so if you're going to do the same thing then you don't have to kind of worry about those changes and overall it shouldn't really be that much difference between Neoforge and Forge presuming Neoforge don't change literally everything um, which I'm pretty sure they are going to do since they're going to try and become like compatible with fabric or some silly stuff like that uh, I, I don't know the details so don't quote me on that but yeah that's kind of a whole situation um but everything's going to be fine for for me doing forge so i'm not too worried about it for now um, but if you did find this tutorial useful please do be sure to give it a like and subscribe uh, the next tutorial as i say will be on parchment mappings so that means that we can have some mapped parameter names instead of like p underscore whatever and uh, that'll be great for uh, some of the future tutorials and yeah uh if you want to help support me continue making these tutorials then you can join uh, my patreon and um yeah i will uh, i'll see you then good bye